Okay guys, so as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I got a Les Paul a while ago and wanted to share it with you guys. Now, I've been very fortunate over the years um, to have had numerous Les Pauls. I currently own three of them, um, each very, very different. But this one, at least for my personal um, preferences, because obviously tone is very subjective, this is the best Les Paul I have not only ever owned, but that I, that I have ever heard. And I'll explain why as we go through this. So this is a Les Paul Traditional Pro 5. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look any different than any other normal Les Paul. But this has uh, a few variations to it that make it really unique. And uh, more importantly, the pickups themselves, uh, apparently Gibson only ever made them on this guitar. They don't sell them separately. You can't get them as replacements. Uh, they don't come on any other guitars. They only come on this, and it's called a trad bucker, um, obviously from the traditional uh, series because this, this is a Les Paul traditional. But most Les Paul traditionals have burst buckers or classics on them. Uh, for whatever reason, Gibson decided to come up with a new a pickup for this one called a trad bucker and it's interesting when you take these out I'll, I'll try to put some b-roll in here to show you but when you take the pickups out and you turn them over on the back side of the pickups it actually has a patent applied for sticker on there um, which at first I'm not I thought are they just trying to be funny and make this look like it's you know because it's a traditional they're trying to emulate the old PAF pickups from the 50s or are they actually trying to apply for a patent for these for these trad buckers. I don't know, but I will tell you that these things sound awesome. Uh, I have Burst Buckers, uh, Burst Bucker Pros in one of my other Les Pauls, and I think these sound even better. Um, so what makes this guitar unique? Well, for me personally, I like satin necks on guitars more than gloss, and all my other Les Pauls have gloss necks, but this one has a satin neck on it. In fact, the entire guitar is satin. Uh, this particular uh, traditional Pro 5 comes in a few different options. This is the iced tea satin finish. It also comes in a washed cherry satin finish. Uh, it also has a solid mahogany. This one's got a, a maple top over the top of the mahogany body. Uh, so there's a solid mahogany one, and then there's also a flame maple one, which is like $1,000 more. Uh, the retail on this one is right at $2,000, uh, $19.99. Um, the mahogany one is the same price, and the flame top one is $3,000. Okay, so satin finish, satin neck, um, you know, I obviously like that. There are a few other Les Pauls that have satin, though, so that's not in and of itself super unique. However, the other... Uh, Les Pauls that I've found that had satin necks on them were the Tributes or the Studios. I think there was a couple of Studios, or you can obviously do a made-to-order, but those you know become like six, seven thousand dollars. So this is the first um, Les Paul that I've run across that has satin neck in either a standard or traditional series, uh, which is the style of, of Les Paul that I like. I like the old '50s um, style bodies, uh, kind of the traditional style, uh, but usually the traditionals only come in the gloss necks, and I just don't want to sand them down. I feel like I'm ruining an expensive guitar. So this is the first one I found that was in satin. So that was number one. Uh, number two, I wanted pickups that sound very authentic to the old classic uh, tones from the, the PAFs and the Burst Buckers, but that have more modern capabilities. And most of the standards and traditionals that I've found – um, all, they, they, have, they might have a, a coil tap on them, but that's about it. Uh, otherwise, it's just very basic, and that's fine. You know, a lot of people prefer that. And then if you go into the – if you want more, the more fancy electronics, you got to go into the Les Paul Modern series. Uh, but the Les Paul Modern series I don't like as much, you know, even though a lot of people really love the carved-out um, neck joints and uh, you know, maybe some of them have like the belly cuts on them. Uh, that just wasn't my thing. I wanted I wanted kind of the traditional style of body. And so it, it always seemed like it was one or the other. You couldn't get the, the high-end, high-performance electronic switching with the traditional uh, body style. Uh, but this one does. So it's obviously a traditional pro, but if you look 
on the back, I took the back plate off of it, as you guys can see, it has the HP-4 um, electronics in it. And that gives you quite a few options. In addition to the push-pull pots, so the, the neck and bridge volume are just like standard. It it's splits the uh, humbucker into a uh, coil tap or coil split. But what's nice is in most Les Pauls that do that, it's just whatever they set it up at from the factory. In this particular one, you may have noticed in the back uh, where the these little dip switches down here, you can actually configure it to do different things. So the first and second dip switches there let you switch between, do you want the push poles to be coil split or coil tap? If you select coil split, which is what I have right now, it goes into true single coil mode. So it's only operating one of the coils on each of the humbuckers. If you do coil tap, um, it's a little bit different. And the way that they configured the electronics in this one is that the uh, humbuckers then uh, go into more of like a P90 style sound, a little bit fatter uh, single coil sound. So that's really cool that you have the option of switching back and forth. It's not just all one or the other. The other really neat thing is that using the uh, tone knob uh, down here, you can actually select if you want the inside or the outside coil when you are in coil split mode. Um, so you can uh, decide which one you want. Why is that cool is because, again, the way that they did these um, pickups, the neck pickup is actually underwound and the bridge is actually overwound. And when you engage the, uh, the electronic setups that they have with the HP4, they blend it in a way to emulate uh, specific sounds. So using the outside coils, at least to my ear, it sounds more like a Telecaster single coil. And when you use the inside coils, it sounds more like a Stratocaster single coil. Really interesting. And, you know, obviously no humbucker uh, split or tapped is going to sound exactly like a Strat or a Tele, but this is probably the closest one I've ever heard. And I've got lots of other PRSs and, and Gibsons that have coil split humbuckers. Uh, this one is the closest that, to my ears that I've heard. I don't know if it's the HP4 switching, the electronics, how they've got it programmed, but they did a really, really good job with those. And then the last um, piece is the other tone knob lets you choose between in phase and out of phase. So when it's down, your pickups are in phase like normal. Uh, when you pull it out, you get that out of phase, like that Peter Green style um, sound. So it just is a massively uh, flexible Les Paul with all of these options. You know, no other Les Paul, at least that I've ever had, gave me that much flexibility. And Usually the ones that you do see with all that flexibility on them are, are a little bit more gimmicky. And when you just are trying to get that regular Les Paul sound when it's just in normal humbucker mode, um, it doesn't really have the same bark and bite to it. Um, this one does. I mean, this this sounds just like a traditional Les Paul when you've got everything switched off into just normal mode. Um, what's also really cool about these, these trad buckers is they sound to my ears a little clearer and brighter than a traditional burst bucker does, but when you stick it through a pedal or through some uh, through an amp with some really good gain on it, they get really, uh, really big bite and growl to them really quickly. Uh, so it, I like guitars that are a little bit more clear and bright by nature because I feel like you can always dirty them up with pedals and amps really really easily, but if you've got pickups that are darker or muddier, it's a lot harder to brighten them up. So I really, really like these um, even more than my burst bucker. And then the other thing that the HP4 switch back here has, in addition to being able to, to switch between the coil tap and coil split, the uh, other switches here let you turn on uh, high pass filters for treble bleed. So when you are running the guitar at lower volumes, you don't lose out on kind of the, the higher tones. Um, so all of that combined just makes this my favorite Les Paul ever made. I mean, I've never heard a Les Paul with pickups that I like as much as the sound of these. I haven't seen another uh, traditional style Les Paul body that has this many high performance features on it. Usually you have to get the Les Paul Moderns for that or a custom shop. Um, and all in a traditional 50s style Les Paul body. Uh, with a satin neck and satin finish, which I prefer over the glossy 
once. So just an amazing uh, Les Paul. I mean, probably one of the more unique Les Pauls I've ever found, other than, you know, obviously some signature series like the Alex Lifeson one, you know, that's a bonkers one. That's, I've got one of those, but uh, it has like a Floyd Rose and a Piezo and, you know, all kinds of stuff that you normally never find on Les Pauls. But as far as a traditional Les Paul, this is probably the most unique uh, and flexible one that I've ever come across. 